Nose surgery, or rhinoplasty, is one of the most common plastic surgery procedures. This procedure can help the patient to correct a structural deformity or a functional problem such as reduce or increase the size of the nose, correct the asymmetry of the nostrils, straighten the curvature of the nasal bridge, lift the tip of the nose, change the angle between the nose and upper lip, correct a birth defect or injury, relieve respiratory problems due to deviated septum. People who wish to have this surgery must be over 15 years of age, since this procedure can only be performed after the nose has reached its full development. It is not advisable for pregnant or lactating women, nor for people with coagulation and cardiovascular problems. The surgical procedure can last from two to four hours approximately. For a correct evaluation of the patient, the nose will be photographed previous to the surgery, and eight different angles and the appearance the nose will have after surgery will be shown in 3D. Before the open rhinoplasty, the surgeon will clean the area with an antiseptic solution to eliminate bacteria and prevent an infection of the surgical wound. After this, the anesthetic, which can be local or general, will be administered. If local anesthesia is chosen, the patient will be given a sedative by means of an injection into the nasal tissues, which will numb the nose and the surrounding areas. Here the patient will remain awake but drowsy, with the help of a medicine that will be administered through an IV. If general anesthesia is chosen, it will be administered to the patient through an IV or via inhalation through the use of gases or vapors through a mask or breathing tube. To begin the procedure, the surgeon will make two small incisions. The first will be in the columella, which is the tissue located between the nostrils and the base of the nose. Here, with the help of a surgical retractor that serves to separate edges such as tissue, the specialist will access the inside of the nose to then make a second incision that will extend from the columella to the interior of each nostril. With surgical scissors, the doctor will carefully separate the skin along the columella by pulling it upwards. Using surgical scissors and a series of retractors, the physician will continue to very carefully remove the skin from the underlying cartilage, which is the cartilage that extends from the nasal bones to the septal portion. Once the skin of the nose is detached from the nasal bone, the surgeon will be able to make the necessary corrections to the nose. Open rhinoplasty allows the doctor to better modify the nose in patients whose tip is wider or protruding. The specialist may choose to remove a portion of the alar cartilage, which is what helps define the cosmetic contour and nostrils. Likewise, the surgeon may choose to use sutures to direct or draw the alar cartilages inward in order to create a narrower tip or correct their position. One of the main objectives of rhinoplasty is to remove the dorsal hump, which is normally made up of cartilage and some bone that alters facial harmony. To remove it, the surgeon can opt for the use of an osteotome, which is a similar device to a chisel used to cut bone. Once the doctor has cut away the desired parts of the cartilage and bone, he can use a delicate surgical rasp to gently tap the protuberances of the nasal bones until they are fractured and displaced upward, thus giving the appearance of a more cosmetic nose. On the other hand, the tip of the nose is normally the element that dictates the goal, and for this reason the back is adjusted to the dimensions of the tip. When the doctor has finished the nasal remodeling, the incisions inside the nose will normally be sutured with dissolvable sutures, that is, that the body is capable of absorbing without having to remove them. In some cases, it is possible to place nasal splints inside and outside the nostrils to provide support and firmness while the nose heals. Bruises may appear on the face in the following days after the surgery. There can also be a presence of small hemorrhages, headaches, and perceiving a clogged nose. These side effects are not worrisome and will disappear as the days go by. The stitches, bandages, and nasal splints should remain on for five to seven days, depending on the doctor's indications. 
As the days go by, the inflammation of the nose will decrease, and after 30 days, it will look more uniform aesthetically. However, it is possible that the final results of rhinoplasty will be reflected up to a year after the procedure.